Thanks so much for joining me on Packaging Unboxed. My name is Avelio Matos, your host. And today we're talking to Rubai Jaffer. We're going to get into what's happening in skincare, some opportunities that she's seeing, some maybe new things. We're going to talk to her about things that she's seeing in the market that maybe could be done better. Maybe things that are being done the old fashioned way that there are new ways to do and maybe new ways to look at packaging in general and who's doing it great and maybe who's doing it not so great. There's a Christmas tree behind her. It's not because she hasn't taken it down, but because this was right after the holidays. But before we get started, I need you to help me help you. If you watch any of the episodes, if you've listened to them, if any of this stuff has helped you in your career, made you laugh, taught you something new, you've got to be a part of the packaging pact. What's the packaging pact? It's a contract. I'm not doing this for free. You've got to pay the price. The price you got to pay is I need you to go to YouTube and I need you to click subscribe. Not only that, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple podcast, go ahead and hit subscribe as well. That's the packaging pact. Why are we doing that? And how can that help me help you? Because the more subscribers we have, the better guests and more content we can bring you. One last thing, our sponsors for this episode are idpdirect.com, packaging manufacturers. They provide all types of packaging, shopping bags, rigid boxes, e-commerce packaging, all to luxury brands all around the world with warehouses everywhere. They do all sorts of amazing stuff. Check them out, idpdirect.com. All right, let's get to the show. Thanks so much for joining us today. We've got Rubai Jaffer. You're a graphic designer. Uh, you work with, uh, you're in the cosmetic industry mm -hmm. and you do some podcasting yeah. as well. So welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Can you give us like a quick rundown of who you are and what you do? So I'm an LA-based graphic designer. I work remotely for a company called Jan Marini Skin Research and it's the skincare industry. And then in my free time, when I'm working outside of my full-time role, I like to freelance. I take on branding, packaging, and illustration work. Um, right now, I've really been deep diving into music design too. So that's been kind of fun. Um, but yeah, just open to any project that will give me the opportunity to learn for the most part. So when you're talking about like music, like what, um, what specifically? So like merch design, album covers, single covers, and so on. So yeah. Okay. Is there yeah. any kind of music specifically or like you're just open to anything? Um, I'm really open to anything, but I um, I'm such an emo kid, so I'm very much into like pop punk and emo music. Um, all my friends are in bands like that, so yeah. usually help them out. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. That's so much fun. Thanks. Um, and then you just graduated in 2018. So yes. Pretty recent graduate, but not really. You're kind of in that early stage of I'm building your career. On, yeah, I'm already on my third job out of school, too. Um, so it's kind of wild. Um, so when I graduated, I actually worked for an ad agency where I had the opportunity to work on um, big films in the entertainment industry. Uh, got to work with, on films for like Paramount, 20th Century Fox, Lionsgate, you name it. Any movie between 2018 to 2019, chances are I worked on it. Um, then, That's awesome. Yeah. And then um, the entertainment industry took a big hit and I unfortunately was laid off. Um, I'm actually really glad that happened really early on in my career because then I learned that, hey, it's not the end of the world. There's so much opportunity yeah. out there. And then I had the opportunity to step into e-commerce where I got to help brands on Amazon and we were creating collateral for them on social media and on the Amazon platform. And then I landed my current role, which is Jan Marini Skin Research, where I'm on the in-house team and we work on marketing collateral and packaging and campaign work. So it's been really fun. So interesting. So you, you were laid off at your first job. Yeah. And in the current work environment, I mean, we're seeing layoffs all over the place. Yep. Left and so right. what would be that piece of advice for anybody that's, that's just been laid off, maybe fresh out of school and it's their first layoff? Like what, what would be important to know? Um, don't let it discourage you. Uh, there's tons of opportunity out there and honestly, just focus on creating concept projects and working on kind of just elevating your portfolio and the way that I see it. And this is just something that I kind of just live my life by is everything happens for a reason. So just keep on trying, don't give up and something good is coming your way. And if not, it's probably going to be better than what you had. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of went through the same thing and I'd spent yeah. years in one position and what tends to happen is like your personal identity becomes that position. Yep. Right. And then when that is taken away, all of a sudden you go through this who am I? You yeah. know, it's like, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah it, it's like, it's, you're incomplete, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Especially it having been my first job out of college, I was so devastated, but then I, w I was told literally the day I was getting laid off that like, Hey, I know it's tough, but you're really lucky it's happening early on in your career so that you kind of realize that, 
outside of your full-time role, you are a person, you have a life to experience and don't mm -hmm. let your career kind of define who you are as an individual. Like you have your own yeah. interests outside of what you do for a living. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Super, super good advice for anybody out there that's going through it. Yeah. Um, no matter what though, it sucks. Oh, right? absolutely. I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. wish it on anyone. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't get it. Yeah, it, it's it doesn't, you know, take the sting off, but just know that it will uh, get better. Yeah. And I mean, in my case, it got me to try freelancing full time for a while. Mm -hmm. And it pushed me in a direction where now I can do my full time role and freelance on the side. So it opens up lots of opportunity at the end of the day, too, because you realize yeah, the world is your oyster. So <laughs> that's right. So like what what got you into design? What got you into packaging? Like, um, where so did that come from? Packaging. I actually was taking a branding class in college and um, my mentor, who is actually a host of the D Deeply Graphic Design cast that um, I have a segment on, Nick Longo, he is a packaging and branding whiz. And when I had taken this branding class, I didn't think about packaging at all. But then when he introduced mm -hmm. us to the fact that it's an expansion of a brand and the fact that this is an experience that consumers get to experience in store or at a restaurant. And then on top of that, in some cases, they get to bring it home and experience the brand <laughs> at home. It's a full on experience. I just, that blew my mind away. I never thought of it that way. Um, I was also working at Nordstrom at the time in college. So getting to work with all these high end brands and really like loving the stuff I was selling. I'm like, Oh, wait, this totally <laughs> goes in hand in hand. And yeah. that just kind of brought the spark for me and introduced me into my love for packaging. So yeah. Yeah. I always look at packaging as the. It's user experience. It was user experience before user experience was a word. Right? Oh, absolutely. Like the way that you engage, the way you can direct somebody to open a certain way and like message them all the way through the whole process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's UX, UI, a hundred percent. Yeah. Just a lot more tactile. Yeah. Which is yeah. better, right? Cause you're yeah. not on a glass screen anymore. You're exactly. Like physically, yeah. It's super, it's super awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. So then in terms of like the stuff that you're working on now for, for, for freelance and for, um, you know, in the skincare, indus uh, skincare industry, you know, where are you finding inspiration today? So I could list the normal sites that everybody goes yeah. to, like the hands, the dye line, um, Instagram. But something that I think is really important, especially as designers, since we spend so much time in front of the screen, I think it's really important to step away from the screen and kind of just go out and experience life. If you have a project where it's in an industry that you're not familiar with at all. Take it as an opportunity to kind of just go out there and experience the world and introduce yourself to something new. So I'm all about like going to stores that might have the product, check it out there, see what's around there. It also gives you the opportunity to see the competitors who are on the shelf with that brand or um, similar brands. And then the other thing is it's just, you have the opportunity to learn. So for example, say I was working on something that I'm not familiar with at all. I'm going to take advantage of that, go out into the space where I would normally see that and just kind of take it all in and mm -hmm. embrace the fact that, Hey, it's something new you get to experience and it's away from the computer, which is kind of cool um, versus yeah. staring at a screen all day. So, yeah, I think definitely in experiencing things that you don't normally do uh, is important. Just get those new experiences out of the way and, and just immerse yourself in the product. Exactly. I remember I had, a mentor, um, that was at Revlon mm -hmm. and, you know, he's like, he's like this big, tall, you know, burly guy. And he's like, I'd be walking around the halls with like nail polish on and like yeah. lipstick on my face. He's like, I, he's like, I'd have the makeup artist come in and like do me up. And he's like, I, I would have to feel like, all right, what does this feel like on my face? Like how yeah. are people that are using it going to feel it? Yeah. Um, He's like, I'd walk into a meeting. I'd have like full makeup. You know? <laughs> well, that's the beauty of being a designer. You, it gives you the opportunity to try so many new things and be introduced to so many new things. And I don't think any other field really gives you that opportunity yeah. as much. So that's the beauty of what we get to do. So, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You, you almost become like an expert in all these different industries. Exactly. You know, entry level. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jack of all okay. trades. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So you're, you're in skincare. Mm -hmm. um, so like what's, What's new and trending in skincare? Like, what are the conversations about uh, in skincare packaging? So that's the crazy thing because there's so many different areas of skincare. You have the high end skincare, you have your average consumer that mm -hmm. is willing to spend a little bit more money. Those are the people that would typically shop at somewhere like Sephora. And then you have your drugstore products, which are brands like Neutrogena, and you can find them almost anywhere. So 
it's just, it's so different within each kind of like, I'd say like each pocket of skincare. Um, I am on the high end side that's a bit more med spa related. Mm -hmm. Um, and in regards to like what's trending, I would say that, um, because you want your consumers to feel as if though the brand is really trustworthy because it is high end, you're spending a lot of money. Typically those are the brands that will have minimal design layouts and those brands, it's just, it, there's elegance to it in a sense. And then you have those high end average consumer brands, which are really fun. And you see that there's a lot of bright colors. There's a lot of just, there's a, a huge wow effect to them. Um, and it's, it's really just bringing on a at home experience of just a lot of fun, but I don't, you don't really think about the, the benefits that the product has to offer. It's not really straight ahead when you look at the packaging yeah. in regards to those. And then you have your usual, which you find at like a Target or a Rite Aid. And those are just your average brands that you see doing everything from like body wash to makeup and everything else. So um, it, it really just varies for the most yeah. part. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's kind of what's trending overall. Um, just okay. there's a lot of like pop of color. And then there's also the minimal, the minimalistic factor for the high end side. Because you're in pack, you know, you're, you're working in packaging. You're also mm -hmm. doing a lot of other things as well. Yeah. Um, you know, marketing and, and just branding in, in general. Yeah. What's your favorite pack out there at the moment? What's killing it Ooh. for you right now? Okay. So this one's not skincare. It's actually a hot sauce. <laughs> um, so <laughs> Danny Trejo actually released a limited edition hot sauce and uh -huh. This packaging is just unbelievable because it is a, it, it almost is as, as if you're buying a fine bottle of whiskey. He has this like matte black box with like a copper finish for all the type and his logo. And it's just a full on experience. You are opening up this huge box and he, there's like an authenticity card that he signs. And it's almost as if like you're, you're <laughs> just buying like a high end wine almost. Um, but yeah, I, I oh think it is just absolutely beautiful. And I've never seen that done for hot sauce mm -hmm. before of all things. And I'm, I'm sure because it's Danny Trejo that he's probably like taking it up a bit in regards to, hey, cool yeah. celebrity doing this. But I think it's just so genius um, how they've oh, done that. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like 80 bucks. Yeah, it is. That's for hot crazy. Sauce. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. It's like a small little t Tabasco size. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wow, that's crazy. And there's only a thousand of them. I pulled it up here. This is so funny. Yeah, um, yeah it's so wild. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's two million Scoville units. So that's pretty hot. Yep. I'm a huge like fan of hot sauce. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so awesome. Um, cool. Yeah, I was not expecting Danny Trejo's hot sauce to be on your, your hit list. <laughs> yeah, super so, random, but it's a really good one. <laughs> Yeah, but that's cool, right? Because then it's like, again, it's, you're not looking at skincare. You're not looking at your industry because then what tends to happen is you just regurgitate what's exactly what you're seeing. Yeah, absolutely. So like always looking, yeah, always looking for stuff outside. Yeah. And I it's think so cool. that's also something I try to keep in mind when working on design work in general. Like mm -hmm. I try to steer away from like the common trends that are happening because otherwise you're just going to look like everyone else. Um, when it comes to like designing, I think it's really important to try and create something that's timeless. So that way, your whoever your client is, whether you're working in house for someone or if you're freelancing, this way the brand doesn't have to constantly keep on looking for a rebrand or just mm -hmm. trying to keep up with everyone. They just get known for being them in that sense. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. Thanks. So if we if we were just to look at skincare, right? We're launching. You and I are launching a skincare brand. Okay. Tomorrow. Uh huh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it, we'll call it Trejo's Hot Sauce um, Skincare. Um, where, where is an area that we can innovate in terms of like skincare? What is everybody doing that's the same? And what is like an opportunity that you think would make sense as a consumer and also for, uh, for the brand? Ooh, this is a really good question. It's very packed. Um, so I, I think something that everyone is really doing is they're keeping their designs really, it, like I said, because there's so many different umbrellas of skincare, this question yeah. can go in so many directions. Um, but for now, I guess I'll just focus on the um, high end side, I guess. Um, yeah, for sure. So in regards to the high end side, you're seeing a lot of minimalistic design and it's very 
formal, not as appealing. I think it's really important for them to probably step away from just the straightforward, just formal side of things. Um, something that we've done in house is try and kind of keep that formal look, but also use things around our products to kind of just elevate the brand and make it seem fun and make them make consumers realize like this is a way that you're taking care of yourself and it is a moment for you within your day to kind of just treat yourself. So um, mm -hmm. it, within packaging, I think it's really important to do that. Like I had the opportunity to recently work on our limited edition skincare management system and we kind of stepped it up a bit and made it a bit more fun um, for the holidays and it completely sold out, which was really great. And wow. with, with that, um, it's just kind of stepping away and kind of connecting to your consumer in that way um, versus just being really boring and plain. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I think I would like to see in the high end side. And I can understand why the high end side tries to keep it really minimalistic and clean. But I do think that adding a little bit of that like pizzazz kind of just brings in consumers a bit more. So I'd, I'd like to see a bit more of that um, on yeah. the high end side of it. No, that definitely that makes sense. So I had um, Steve Lamoureux, who's the founder of a company called Design Analytics mm -hmm. um, on recently. And he was just talking about how a lot of times we see like the same type of packaging. Like if you mm -hmm. launch, if you're launching a new product, you look at who the high end or who the biggest competitor is in that space. And you try to mirror, you know, mirror their packaging. Yeah. That's and typically like, what happens. Yeah. And he's like, don't, he's like, don't do that. He's like, they are the biggest in that space because they're known, you know, the, the brand is a known entity. So like, for example, if we're looking at like Chanel skincare mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, some, you know, you, you name it. Dr. Paracone, yeah, you know La Prairie, you know that skincare is a brand that's known. And if we're launching, you know Trejo's hot sauce because it's you know you're gonna put it on your skin, it's gonna make you look hot. Um, we can't look like La Prairie. We don't have that branding, even if we want to be, you know, high end. Like we yeah. have to be ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. I also think that at the end of the day, you're gonna get mixed up. You're not gonna remember that brand's name if you do something to make yeah. yourself stand out. It's gonna be like, oh, I remember them. Or I guess I could like, even in regards to just like your average consumer, if you look at brands like Fenty or Rare Beauty, where there's a mm -hmm. lot of these celebrities who are also in makeup, if you were to, I, like they work really hard for their brand identity and their packaging, but it's also similar. They're all using those sans serifs. It's just, you can tell that it's the trend that's happening right now yeah. on that side of skincare. So, um, yeah. 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 Somebody that's doing like amazing stuff out there is, um, a team called someone and others. Oh, I actually haven't and heard of that one. You haven't. Yeah. Those no. guys are doing it amazing. It's, um, and Danny is the founder of, of someone and others. I really consider us storytellers versus like designers because, uh, we're trying to tell a story and the best way to do that is across every single touch point. They do like the packaging for Starface. They do, um, like plus they do all sorts of stuff. And if you look at all the packaging that they're creating for, for skincare, yeah. It doesn't look like anything else. It doesn't even look like packaging you've seen in any other industry because they're just trying to reinvent everything specific to the brand and the target. Yeah, I love that because um, then it shows variety on the market too, which is really important. Yeah. Yeah. And it connects with the user. Exactly. I don't know, it's just definitely kind of a, a new way to do it versus like, all right, we've done a bottle and a box. We're going to, you know, our competitors do it. We're going to do that. Like yeah. they're looking at you know, dissolvable films and the, like keepsake packaging. Oh, that's so really cool. Beyond... Yeah, beyond like the standard goofy stuff. Anything you didn't learn in school that you wish you would have learned in school? Ooh, uh, this is a really good question because there's tons. Um, <laughs> I'd say don't get too attached to your designs. I know when you're in college and you have the opportunity for concept projects and stuff, you get really attached. And something that I learned, especially because once you graduate, you're in a lot of fast paced environments where the turnaround rate is so fast that you can't get attached to your work and you're going to get mm -hmm. feedback so quick. And um, it's just art directors are just going to tell you how it is. And you're just expected to make those changes. Don't get attached. Don't take it personally. It has Your design is not you. Um, it's yeah. just what you're creating. So keep that in mind and just be open-minded when you get feedback more than anything. So, yeah. Yeah. So when people are being super blunt, like what are they saying? Like what's the, what hurt your feelings? Ooh, oh man, we're going deep, <laughs> deep here. Um, I guess I will, when I was in the ad agency, I was just shocked because 
I never thought I would have art directors that were pixel pushers, but they were pixel pushers mm -hmm. and they could like notice when something wasn't centered and they were like three pixels off yeah. and stuff. And when you're hearing this constantly every single day and you're like, I could have sworn I measured it. I used the align <laughs> tool and then you're, they, they're, they still manage to be right. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> so, um, it definitely got me to learn how to be on top of double checking yeah. my work too. Um, but yeah, that was just something that would really get to me. And like, I would come home and I'd be like, Oh my God, I think I got told this probably like 15 times today. I feel terrible about yeah. this. Um, so yeah, that's something oh, that that's really funny. hurt. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had somebody call me a nerd yesterday and it actually hurt my feelings. I was oh, like, oh, that's, that's so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my kids, like, I talked to my, I talked to my, my nine year old about it and she's like, so, but you are a nerd. I'm like, yeah, I guess so. I'm like, all, right, I'm <laughs> all you got to do at the end of the day is embrace it, right? So, <laughs> yeah, for sure. It was so silly. Um, what does a future skin here look like without packaging? Um, see, that's where it is really tough, especially because environmentally, the, the world is clearly going through so much. And mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of initiatives out there where you can actually go into a store, bring your glass jar, and have them refill, whether it be produce or lotion, shampoo, conditioner. Um, I would like to see something like that happen for skincare, mm -hmm. but because of the science that goes into it, I think it's going to be really tough. And this is why packaging is so important in skincare. Um, so it, it's really tough to say that, or even think about skincare, not having packaging involved. Um, but it would be nice to see like an initiative taken into place. And I know there's brands out there that are looking for alternatives that go in that direction, but when it comes to science, it's just, it's so tough to nail that. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of challenges because of the chemistry and the chemistry in and of itself of the skincare product. Yeah. Um, let alone when you have to combine it with oxygen or an, an applicator or mm -hmm. the packaging, any of those things can, can really impact the, the quality of that. But exactly. If we were to get rid of, I don't know, like I'm, I'm seeing a ton of like slug juice skincare out there, right? <laughs> Where it's like, they've I don't know, it's like fresh squeezed slugs and then you like rub it on your face. It's like this lather and it's supposed to be yeah. good for you. But if we were to eliminate packaging from that, I mean, essentially you'd be able to have a, a slug farm in your house. Yeah. Right? You can I mean, just, right. There's yeah. nothing keeping you from the, like, rela the relaxing feeling of slugs on your face. Yeah. Um, it's, it's basically like at home skincare, people making scrubs at yeah. home and whatnot. It's a great alternative, but <laughs> the thing is, is it going to work as well as what's on the market? That's the other question too. Mm. I think that's where it's like this knowing the science and really just having tried because I s suffered from severe acne and whatnot and having tried so many different things on the market and then being in introduced to the company that I work for and it clearing up my acne. I'm like, Oh, finally understanding the science behind all of it too. Yeah. Um, I, I finally understand why it's so important to not have your vitamin C serum sitting out in a warm setting and things like that. But yeah, I mean, you could try this stuff at home, but I, I really just think, mm -hmm. especially because skin is just such a like unique thing where it's so different for each person too. So it, it makes it really tough to even answer that question in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just like, how do we, how do we push beyond like tubes and sprays and jars? Um, yeah. Like I'm thinking like uh, a couple of years ago, Kohler faucet fixture company, yeah. right? Like they released a, a shower head that has a built-in speaker. And then there was somebody that released a shower head that had like some fragrance and, um, you know, scents that came out of it. It's like, yeah, I've seen the ones with the lights too out there that yeah. you can have like different color changing lights in your shower and stuff too. Um, yeah. yeah. It's like how, you know, why can't we put like uh, skincare in there? It's like, just turn it on and you know, you get have your just full body on dose. You. I mean, right. <laughs> we could, but at the end of the day, like even when it comes to something like that, you're going to have to refill mm -hmm. it for the product and things like yeah. that too. So, um, but like I've thought about it and like we've talked about it at work too, or, um, in regrets, like an eco-friendly thing, why not having like a container that could probably like dissolve or something like that, or mm -hmm. not necessarily dissolve, but we'll just disintegrate and can be recyclable kind of like the way that we compost things and whatnot, something like that, yeah. or just reusable things. Um, but it, at the end of the day, it does make it tough. And in regards to like that, it's also probably just like having a place to refill these items too would also be great. But if you did have a slug farm, you could compost. That is true. So much easier. <laughs> Very true. So true. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff out there. So there's mm -hmm. um, like some mono material uh, pumps now where the outer pack and the pump components are all made out of the same polymer, which then allows you to recycle the entire unit, which is great. 
Yeah. Versus like what we used to see in the old days where there was like five different materials combined to create this uh, pump, which yeah. then isn't recyclable. Another thing that we face in sustainability is the fact that a lot of skincare products are small. That's a that's Answer. a huge thing I've noticed. Yeah. Um, and I mean, brand that I actually use for like hair that's really great um, is Amica, where they actually sell things in like liter balls. And then they have these um, packs, which is just like it's a flimsy little pack that has their product mm-hmm. in there, but it's a recyclable pack. So instead of buying a whole new bottle, you're getting the actual pack and then you just squeeze it all in there, put it back in your bottle and then the pack's recyclable. So um, definitely seeing stuff like that. We've talked about that at work, too. Mm-hmm. Um it's just finding the right products and then are more so the right materials that work with the product, which is the tough part science wise. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. One thing I just learned, um, which seems so silly to have just learned it was talking to somebody in cosmetics and they're like, um, this product, it's really small and you know, it's like small products don't recycle just because they don't make it through the, the processing. Mm-hmm. That's another but they're thing. Like, yeah. We tell, yeah, they're like, we tell our customer just it, it's aluminum, just bend it and put it inside of a can. Oh, that's cool. I didn't think about that. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's like so simple. Why didn't I ever think? I'm, like, I'm just putting this in the landfill because you know, I'm putting it in the trash because it's not going to make the recycling. And they're like, yeah, just put it in a can. Or yeah. if it's, um, you know, this paperboard component, just fold it up and put it inside of a bigger a bigger um, box. Yeah. Um, that's actually, it's funny that you mentioned <laughs> that. Um, it, it just reminded me like something that we were trying to figure out at work was one of our lo- lotions. We were just like, oh, we can take out this one portion and then just mm-hmm. maybe send a little pack that has like a foil um, sleeve on top and then you just put it back in the container. Um, So stuff like that is really cool too. Um, But also just repurposing some of the jars that you're given. Like um, I know a coworker and I, we figured out how to do that and we're like, oh, this would be really pretty to just keep your jewelry in or something like that too. So nice alternatives like that. And I guess that's the cool part about packaging where it's like, oh, if it looks nice enough, you you can use it for something else too. And then as we kind of wrap up, like if anybody wants to reach out to you on the freelance side, what kind of work are you looking for? Um, I'm honestly open to anything. I'm a yes person. So that's the fun part. <laughs> um, just because it gives me the opportunity to learn, but more than anything, I'd say like illustration work, packaging, branding, and music design are where it's at for me. I, anytime those opportunities present themselves, I'm all about it and I'm happy to help. Awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. I really appreciate you hopping on here with us and just chatting through design and packaging and skincare. Yeah. learned a ton. <laughs> I'm happy to be here and thank you so much for reaching out and having me on here today.